Okay. Good morning. You know, it's interesting how God leads you on your journey with him. <clears throat> and then for me, I knew from quite early days with him that um, he'd called me to do something like this as part of what I did, to sort of preach, teach, share the word, travel around even doing that. And sometimes he gives you the word and it just is there. And it's interesting, last time I spoke, there was some bits that I thought, oh, that could make maybe the next preach. But then a couple of weeks on after that, things sort of changed and I felt God was speaking to me about something different. And so for the last sort of couple of weeks, I've been letting him speak to me about what I'm talking about today. And, you know, God is, you know, I really feel for, for those who don't know God as like father, the personal relationship, maybe they have belief of another you know religion and they'll be so lovely and they can be so devout but God is just a distant sort of concept he's not here as father they don't feel his holy spirit filling them guiding them and that's the all important thing for me because I was I was just you know because God can speak to you anytime and like when it comes to getting a message together there's no necessarily set formula of how that happens for me. <clears throat> I was literally just sitting there, I think it was like a Saturday morning or something, had a little bit of time to myself, and I was just like watching this like documentary about like planes, about like flights, like long haul flights or something. And as a this this massive like 380 like was capable it had so much space in it it could carry like its own engines if it wanted and one engine was like it said it was like 10 tons one engine for this thing and i just looked at the jet engine and i thought you know someone came up with that like the human being is capable potentially of of coming up with something like that. Like someone first started maybe sketching that and then not just thinking about it, but getting it together, pioneering a way forwards. The, the, the feat of engineering to come up with stuff like that and then actually building the thing and a plane, getting that off the ground. And... I just felt like God was just speaking to me, like, just about the intricacies of the human being. You know, the more time I spend with God, the more ridiculous it seems to just think of how you could just believe we're all one big accident. You know? And <laughs> I want to be, like, really respectful if someone didn't believe, because I remember before I was a Christian, I just thought the Bible was just a bunch of fairy tales and whatever. And I just thought, oh, sure, I'll just go with evolution and it's all one big accident and that's it. But then the crux of it isn't that I entered into some big debate or argument about this book. It was that I entered into a relationship with Christ. Uh, it took years <laughs> and people keep like sewing words in and praying for me behind the scenes. But it was finally a moment when I could receive God and let him in. And the moment that happens, things just become alive. Like questions you may have had may even like kind of disappear and not matter. Some get answered, some don't. But the profoundness of the relationship with God just outweighs everything else, I find. And the deeper you get in with Christ, like, the more you just know. Even if you can't answer someone's question, even if you can't always explain everything, that doesn't matter. It's the relationship. And I felt like God was just 
just saying, you know, look at just you, human beings. Look at, you know, you are the pinnacle of my creation. Look at everything else he created. That's just fascinating enough. Like, I could just look at, like, a landscape or a sunset or, or space or something, and that can mesmerise you and entertain you and engage you for, for hours. Just the magnificence of that, just... It's mind-boggling. But then God created people, the absolute masterpiece of his creation. You know, just how intricate we are, just, just, just the physiology, the biology of a human being, down to the smallest cell. How a, a couple of bits of DNA, if you will, can create something so spectacular. That's not an accident. And, you know, there's people who need to hear that, you know, you are not an accident. And you didn't just crawl out of some slime or come from some monkey. You were created by God Almighty. Amen. You know, we've been singing about him today because we've entered relationship with him. And we can do that. And people need to hear that. And I feel it's really about just say, okay, God, if you're real, let me step into that relationship because the door's open. But then for we who believe, the invitation to go deeper and to step in closer is always there. There's the initial door that opens. I stand at the door and knock. <laughs> Yeah, you open that door when you become a believer. You let him in. You receive him as Lord and Saviour. You, you confess that and you believe that. And then in relationship, you know, I've talked before about the sort of bubble of grace, if you will. It's just a, a picture to have in my mind to think of, you know, we walk and you need to keep this kind of bubble of grace around you. It's this healthy, loving environment whereby you can grow. So with the word of God, powered by his Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters, people around you, just, just growing together, learning together. And then there's a healthy acceptance that, you know, we can make mistakes, but we sort of dust each other off. You know, there may be times of rebuke and correction needed, but there's a healthiness to that because we know that God's got more maybe than the state you're in. So there's a healthy, oh, have you looked at that? Maybe you could do that differently because there's something more. And that's the healthy bubble of grace that we have around us. And that's relationship. And I felt just... If nothing else today, just take away God offers you relationship and he wants to do everything with you in relationship. So <laughs> I wanted to talk today from a very familiar couple of verses. It's the start of Romans 12. A lot of you already know, well, that's the one about renewing your mind. But remember everything you know but also try and forget everything you know, because maybe there's something new and fresh that God wants to give you today. I just want to read you these two verses from Romans chapter 12. This is the Apostle Paul talking to the Romans. He says, I beseech you there, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Much to ask, is it? And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove that is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind.
the danger you can sort of fall into is when you become a Christian, it's like the light gets turned on. But you know yourself, if you've got a room, if you turn a light on, you might notice, oh, actually, that corner looks a bit mucky. Or, oh, that, that carpet is a bit dirtier looking than when the light was dim. <laughs> yeah? And then there's stuff all of a sudden that you're like, oh, actually, and, and if you were like me, there was like tons of stuff. There was so much, it was ridiculous. Um, but that didn't phase God. He's, he's, he's all right with handling those kind of situations. Um, and when we step into relationship, like God will shine lights, but often in areas at a time. And sometimes what you think might be a huge area that needs sorting, maybe to God isn't actually that big. Maybe there's a, a, a smaller but more significant root somewhere that he wants to look at that will actually clear away a lot of the sort of debris and weeds that are on the surface. So as you step into relationship, what God's inviting you to do here is he's saying come into relationship and then within that, renew your mind. Change the way you think, essentially, because the way God often does things can seem like backwards, inside out and upside down. It can seem illogical, it can seem irrational, because when you move in the supernatural, you are not limited by the natural. Amen. The natural exists, but you are not limited by that. So if I see someone who is, who is ill, I can pray for that person and a miracle can happen because God Almighty has made that possible. The name of Jesus, we've sung it today, the authority of Christ. Jeff read from Ephesians. It says all is under his authority, under his feet. So we, as children of God, as ambassadors, as disciples, can move in that. We can see that. But that comes from a renewed mind yep. to know that, hey, what I see with my eyes, I don't have to accept that. If God's calling me to make a change there and bring somewhat of heaven to earth, I can do that. Not every situation is an appointment, though. Paul Williams spoke to <laughs> us just recently about good works and dead works. So... We need to know, God, is that your appointment? Have you called me to this situation now? And that's a general step-by-step, hour-by-hour, day-by-day. But also there's the bigger concept of, okay, what's maybe the call on my life? Is there something specific or a number of things that I'm mainly called to do? And there might be one or two big general things. And you do lots of different things, but they all have the same kind of focus. That comes from relationship. As you step into relationship, God maybe starts to highlight things, edges he wants to smooth off, things he wants to clean up, things he wants to get rid of, things he wants to replace. But he does that as you renew your mind, because you need to sort of see, you see yourself as his precious creation, but then you also see that he's got a lot more for you than your current state of existence. And that's the renewed mind. I beseech you, be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. See, there's a specific reason here that Paul is giving for renewing your mind, to know the will of God, the will of God, good, acceptable and perfect will of God. Perfect doesn't mean you won't make mistakes. Perfect is as in how he would call Job blameless, David a man after his own heart. God is perfect. We are imperfect, but within relationship, our mind can be renewed and we can grow in the things of God.
<clears throat> we can grow in the ways of the Lord. And I really felt like that was really just the key, the crux of what God has to bring for you today. That's the thing that just kept resting with me, resting with me. It's I've called you into relationship. But the renewal of that mind is so key <clears throat> because it's not some argument that you can figure out. There'll be plenty that doesn't make sense along the way. And sometimes the deeper you get with God and the closer to him you get, the less seems to make sense. It's a very strange kind of walk. <clears throat> but do you have the fundamental trust in him? If he has spent so much time precisely engineering every single one of us by perfect design, loving and nurtured, I see the flip side of that as he's got every intention all the time for our best and our good and our well-being. That's what he wants for us. That's all he wants for us. He wants every single person to fulfill the plan he's given them, the bespoke plan that only you can fulfill. No one can walk my walk and I can't walk any of yours. And he's designed that deliberately so that we all need each other. Like you take one piece out of a jigsaw, doesn't matter how beautiful or elaborate or massive the jigsaw is, you could have a thousand piece jigsaw. If one piece is missing, I bet your eye will notice that. Rather than the big jigsaw in the picture, you'll go, it's a piece missing. Yeah? That's the body of Christ. That's why God spends so much time calling his people in to try and be in agreement, you know. And even if you've got differences, different views, different opinions, try and find a place in relationship of solidarity and walk on together as a body functions in unity, synergy, where all the little individual parts create something so much more, like that jet engine, any little piece missing, that's not going to work. But all those pieces put together in exactly the right way produces something spectacular that's capable of projecting you, propelling you all over the world, something that once would have seemed impossible. Keep that kind of imagery in mind, because I really feel like like I've said before, that this is a significant time in history and God's putting calls on our life, however big or small it may seem. And he's saying, you know, the way we do this is in relationship. Come into relationship, be in relationship. If nothing else on any day, just thank God at the start of your day, invite him into your day. He's always there. He's always with you, but like actively invite him into your day. Just give him praise in the morning. Thank you, Lord. I invite you into your day. I don't get out of bed before saying, Lord, into your day I step. Into your way I go. Guide me in that. So that every footstep I take is leaving imprints of the kingdom of God. That's what he gives us. That's scriptural. That's what he's called everyone to do. But we do it in relationships. And you know, you have that healthy bubble of grace because you will make mistakes. I don't speak that over you, I just, it's just the case, you know. But don't be afraid to step out and, you know, make mistakes or, or get it wrong. Because God is looking for you to just step out like the way you would raise your children. You, you encourage them. And, you know, if, if they get something a bit wrong, well, you know, pick them up, dust them off, encourage them for the next time. Even if they've strayed a bit, well, okay, let's get back on track. But this is where the renewed mind comes in because if you're wandering off a bit, I always talk about it like, say, on a motorway, you've got the little bumpy bit that goes... <laughs> if your car, if your tyre hits it a bit, and that's like, oh, OK. But that protects you from the big metal barrier. Yeah? The bumpy bit of paint 
stops you hitting the barrier. So God essentially puts a sort of parameter, but that's not to be seen as a limitation or a restriction. It's to be seen as a healthy space in which to play, grow, live, to be. And he may widen that at a certain point if he sees that someone has renewed their mind and got into a certain place, he may think, right, I can widen that now. We can go further afield. But you may feel like God's not widening things that you want widened. That'll be because he knows you're not ready yet. That's not anything wrong particularly. It's just the time's not quite right. But there may be something he's called you to do. There may be something he wants you to address that is saying, actually... I've spoken to you about this, but you're not doing it, or we're not there yet, or there's still a few things that we need to clean up and sort out. And he's like, actually, if I widen those boundaries now, you'd get burned a bit. You'd, you'd be wandering into territories that you're not ready for. Because the more we build the kingdom of God, the more we wake up the enemy. Yeah, you get more and more dangerous to the opposition you don't need to fear the opposition because he's under the feet of Jesus. And God will one day just blow him away into hell. It will be that simple. But the devil isn't scared of you. And the devil can beat you hands down any moment unless you are in Christ. Because when you are in Christ, just like God looks upon you and sees his son Jesus and the covering of the blood of Christ, so does the enemy. He sees Christ in you. And when you start using the name of Jesus with authority, That's right. as inheritance, as a legally appointed, adopted child of God, when you start moving in that, that is terrifying to him. But what he'll often do is try and come after you. Especially in the early stages of something new. It's far easier to rip up a plant when it's starting to grow than try and like cut down the oak tree when it's established. Yeah? But it's relationship. Relationship with God, but also that includes each other. Because as we step into new things, have prayer support. Yeah? We need people spotting each other prayerfully meeting with each other, encouraging each other, get into your word, give praise, give glory to God, give thanks, yeah? You start giving thanks and just praising God. The devil can't exist in that space. Right. If your bubble is full of praise and worship in the name of Jesus, that is, that is so toxic to the devil. He can't be in that place. He cannot be in that place. Cultivate that like your own little greenhouse of God. Cultivate that so that you can grow and thrive, bear fruit for the good works that he has for you. And in relationship, you'll know the good works. And if you step out for, for God and you've, you've got it wrong a bit or you've, you know, you've misheard and, well, just in a healthy way, be prepared for God to just give you a little tap and say, oh, no, that's not quite right. Let's change it. Because as Paul said to us when he spoke about good works, he said that God could give you the good work, but maybe as you start in it, you start to get some of your ideas and your plans and your good work is starting to deviate towards a dead work. Well, within that, keep that renewed mind open for God to just maneuver you back and if you're in a dead work have the sort of courage and confidence in Christ to just say okay I leave that now what is the work you have for me God what am I stepping into with you you know it's very interesting that the children are sort of in today um, because as I was actually sitting down and preparing this, I actually started scribbling. This is my one and only page of notes. It's the way I've always done it. 
I usually have a few coloured pens and pencils. I write on some scrap paper. And that's what I do. And that works for me. That's just how it is. And I've always done it. Bit of scrap paper, and that's how it goes. So as I was watching my aeroplane programme and the jet engine, a bit later after that, my son, Noah, came down. He's seven. And... Um, Often, if I'm working on the word, I'll, I'll need sort of my space. But actually, on this occasion, it seemed fine, and he just came and sat with me. And then um, he actually then started getting some thoughts. And he like, it just felt like, again, the bubble. I suppose my bubble encompassed the sofa. So as he sat on the sofa, God was speaking to him. So he then came up with a couple of thoughts that, like, I thought, yeah, they fit. And I said, they fit. And he said, and I wrote them down. I wrote them down straight away so I didn't forget. He said, I got two points. One point, he said, oh, let me read them first, make sure I get it right. Yeah, so even a Christian can still do bad things, especially early on. So I thought, well, that ties in, because that's essentially what we're saying. As you're learning, as you're starting out, you might make a bit of a mess but God's got a lot of cleaning equipment. He's got a big mop, <laughs> thank God. <laughs> Everyone's like, yep, yep. And if you're not, yep, yep, you'll be yep, yep at some point. <laughs> and then the second point, he actually had a consideration for those who don't know Christ yet, and he said, actually, God is still with non-believers. There you go. What a concept. Already, there's the understanding of there's God and what he can do in my life and, and how he can sort of help me and grow me and nurture me. But also, for those who don't yet know him, he's still right next to them. And they're still living in so much of his goodness. I mean, like I look back and think, wow, there was so much of his goodness that I was living in and benefiting from that I just didn't know. But you see, until you step into relationship, you don't always know. So I think there's a real season coming where God is looking to bring such a harvest of people, of souls in. But it, it's not necessarily going to be sitting and having a big debate with somebody. It's like the Apostle Paul said once, he said, I didn't win them with fine-sounding arguments, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. It's like, <laughs> you go up to somebody, and you need to sense appointments here, it's not just running around, <laughs> but, you know, pray into your day and say, Lord, give me appointments. So maybe you encounter someone who, who got a decision to make and you just go, well, actually, I'm a Christian. Can I pray for you that you'll get the right decision and see what happens? Maybe they're in some kind of pain. You say, well, can I pray for you? They may get healed right there on the spot. They may start to get healed. They may receive a measure of that. That will stay with them. They might not fall on their face and become a Christian right then. But that will stay with them. They'll remember that day they got prayed for. Or even that someone cared to ask about them and showed them some consideration. That could be it. In such an unloving world, in some respects, in such an individualistic kind of world, just being there and chatting with someone and showing you care that might stick with them. That was the case for me back in the day. I was very isolated, very unlovable, very just oh, in darkness. But this place, there was people who would sit, chat with you, welcome you, and accept that you were where you were, but still welcome you. That's because those people had relationship with God and they understood that God didn't require them to take a bath and get all cleaned up before coming to know him. They came to know him and got renewed and transformed as their mind was renewed and transformed. 
and that spreads. <laughs> but you need to trust him. Do you trust him? Really? You know, um, I recently had a, a track day, a racing car experience, which was really good. I like my cars. Before I was a Christian, I used to drive like a race driver on the roads, so it was like really bad. And God just covered me and protected me so many times. There's loads about his grace, I can tell you. But now I do it on a track. My wife bought it for me, actually, this experience day, actually from, from Christmas, but because there were still so many like restrictions and everything, it's like taken a while for it to happen. So it was, it was just recently... That I, that I did this, and um, so I was in an Audi R8, so that's a supercar, V10 engine, over 500 brake horsepower, 0 to 60 in just over three seconds, so it's like, you know, my car's not slow, but like, this is next level, so why they call it a supercar, and when you're in it, it's like nothing you've driven, it's like, but that, that's, and it's a bit like when we become Christians, when you step into the relationship with God, it's like he starts to say things that are like nothing you've ever heard before. And they might sound ludicrous because they don't make sense. It might be illogical and irrational and even impossible, but there is no such thing as illogical, irrational and impossible with God. It's just how he moves. It's just us in the physical world with our somewhat limited mind which needs to be renewed so that his mind is more imprinted on ours. We understand more of his thoughts, his ways, how he sees things. Open our eyes that we may see, Lord, as the prophet said. But, you know, so I got in this car and you've got your instructor. Well, at first he takes you out in a car, he's driving, and he does some slow laps that seemed quick enough, actually. And then he's like, right, now for a fast lap. And I'm like, oh, dear God. And then so he like races this car around, and you think you're going to crash it pretty much every corner, but you don't. And then you get out of that little car, and, and you get into the one you're going to have. So I got into my Audi, and so you sit in there. And then he's there in the seat with you, and so he starts to take you out. He's already spoken a little bit about the track to you. And that's kind of what God does. He shows you sometimes a bit of the way, talks to you about a few of the basics, wants to get a few things right. Okay, this is when you go, this is when you break, this is when you turn. A few of the fundamentals that you need to just get under your belt. And then you build and build and build. And, you know, you're going round, and, like, at first, you're like, you know, and you th you, you're going fast, and you're looking at this bend coming up, and he's just, the instructor's like, right, now just turn, keep the power on and turn, and you're like, I'm going to crash. I'm going to spin out or crash because I'm going too fast for that corner. But if you turn, as he says, you don't spin out and crash because the car is capable of handling it. The tyres on that car are like no tyre that I've felt before. So it's like eagle claws gripping the track and wrenching the car around. And you can hear the tires, you know, but they have it. And they say, you flick it that way. And then through the chicane, flick it that way. Then he's like, right, power on. And so and this thing's roaring away. And then he's like, right, now break in a straight line. There's a tiny little break in it. He's like, right, back on the power. And then you chuck it that way, chuck it that way, back that way. And then you've got this straight. And you just roar this thing down the straight. And there's like marked out areas. He's like, right, this is when you break a bit. Then you lift off and then you go. If I were to do, try any of that in my car, I would have crashed every corner. But the instructor knew the track. He knew the car. He knew what he was doing. So the more I listened to the instructor, the more it started to come together. And not only was I improving, keeping the speed, not braking as much, getting the line better, getting around the track, but the whole experience became more and more fun. And that's like our walk. You step into relationship and you give God permission to renew your mind. 
But that starts with your choice, and it has to continue to be your choice to let God renew your mind, renew your mind, renew your mind. Let him renew and renew and renew and renew your mind as an ongoing place in relationship. And then with the instructor there, trust him. If he says, foot to the floor, even if it looks like you shouldn't, it's a foot to the floor time. If it's a break, break. But you might think, oh no, I'm going too fast. I need to break even harder for longer. And he's like, no, no, quick dab of breaks, off again, keep the power on. And it worked. If he says, turn like that, you think, oh no, surely that'll spin. No, no, I know this. I've got this. And this is, just, this is just a guy who knows how to drive a fast car around the track. I'm talking about that so that we try and maybe understand God a bit more, so that we've got an image to understand how God does what he does with us. Because that, that really impacted me. Like afterwards, like that was on my mind. And as I was driving back, just in my car, I was thinking about those things and I thought, yeah, that, that, that will go in the message. I thought God had just used that to speak to me and just to refresh in me something, what I already knew, but just to bake it into me even more. Because we're in this time, we're in this season of God doing new things, God more than ever wanting his church to rise up, to meet the appointments he has for them. just want to show you a scripture from the end of the previous chapter of Romans, chapter 11. Because these weren't chapters back in the day. This was a letter. So just the last few verses. This is the Apostle Paul really just admonishing the Lord, lifting him up. He says, For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has become his counsellor, who has first given to him, and it shall be repaid to him. For of him, and through him, and to him, are all things. To whom be glory forever. Amen. And you know, it's interesting because what we would call chapters 10 and 11 is actually talking a lot about Israel the Jewish people, and God's plan for them, God's love for them. You know, God hasn't finished with the Jewish people. He hasn't finished with Israel. And it's interesting how off the back of those two chapters, the Apostle Paul then says, I beseech you, therefore, the context of the nation of Israel in this. <clears throat> you know, some Christians don't want to bless Israel. They don't want to support Israel because they've made a political decision or a social decision. But what God says about his people is a scriptural decision. So irrespective of however you feel, it's looking at what does God say in his word? Because all throughout Old Testament to New, he's saying those, he actually calls Israel my special treasure. He wants you to bless them irrespective of what you feel. So it's interesting that on the back of that, he says, renew your mind, be transformed. Because that's just one example of how maybe you see a situation and think, oh, I might not agree with that. And you're free to make your own choice and go your own way, but that may put a barrier and a blockage. But with the renewed mind, you can say, okay, Lord, irrespective of feeling, irrespective of understanding or anything, I will choose to honour your word and do as instructed. And I thought that was just an interesting little point I would bring just at the end, just as a, to really bring a tangible way to this, because as you walk with God, things in this book will offend you. They'll offend your mind, you may not agree with him, you might dislike him, you might wish they weren't there. But if you choose to ignore them and go your own way, God will let you do that. But your relationship 
will struggle and suffer. So I would invite you in a fresh way today, whatever it is, just be in the relationship. And I just want to pray for us to feel a fresh touch today of, of God's presence and God's relationship. And if he's putting something on your heart to change and get sorted out, could be a physical thing in your life to do, could be a mindset, a way of thinking. Get it dealt with. Let him do his work with you. So Lord, I thank you for the privilege of just walking life with you. And I thank you for all my brothers and sisters in Christ here. Father, I thank you that you allow us to be in relationship with you and you give us that healthy place to grow and to learn. Help us to always see what you see, understand things as you do. And Lord, if we don't understand or don't even agree, help us to have the courage to say by our will that we believe you and choose your way above that of our own. I pray that for everyone today, Lord, and I pray that we would have a fresh, renewed sense of your presence to help us continually renew our mind so that we know the answer to the question, Lord, of what is my call? What is my role? What are the good works you have for me? We pray for revelation in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you all.